All right, let's tackle problem number two. So this one's got some exotic things going on. So again, our semi major axis being 15,000. Nice to know. Whatever. Eccentricity of exactly zero. Oop, alarm bells. Okay, so that means I have a circular orbit. Ha. Ah. Okay, that's all it can tell me for the box problems. Uh, inclination of zero. Ooh, more alarm bells. Okay, so there's a couple things we know. From the last problem, we know that an inclination of exactly zero or 180 would mean equatorial, and we have zero, so that definitely satisfies that. Anything between zero and 90 is also prograde. Well, zero counts, so we'll mark that. If an orbit's prograde, it can't be retrograde. And if it's an equatorial orbit, there's no way it could be a polar orbit, so we'll cross those out. Now we've got some very weird things, right? Uh, RAN is, of course, undefined because, you know, if, if you're always on the equator, that means you're never ascending from the southern hemisphere to over the northern hemisphere. You're just always sitting on the equator, uh, spinning around the Earth. How nice. Okay. And if that means if I don't have RAN, how can I measure argument of perigee? And if I don't have a perigee, uh, because it's perfect circle and every part's equally close to the Earth, so no perigee, well, then how do I measure true anomaly? Okay, well, we address all that with what we call an alternate COE, uh, which is this bad boy, uh, argument of longitude. And basically, it starts off at I hat, and we measure it all the way around to uh, where the satellite currently is. So let's draw that. So basically, for this problem, very kind of exotic, we only have the top view. I draw my ice caps, my little K hat coming out of the board at us, coming out of the paper, I should say. So let's draw our I hat right here. Yeah, sorry, this is the Earth. This is the orbit. Okay. Um, you can tell it's the Earth because of that. <laughs> okay. All right, so here's our I hat pointed out to the right there. Let's trace out basically 180 degrees worth of true longitude, or sorry, argument of longitude. Boom, spacecraft location. That's about as complex as this one gets as far as that goes. So what else can we know? All right, going back to our boxes, if we have an equatorial orbit, that means the satellite can never ever pass over the k-axis which goes through north and south pole. So we'll cross those out. Can I be at perigee or apogee if my orbit doesn't have a perigee or an apogee, right? It's perfectly circular, so no. Can I be at an ascending node or a descending node if I never cross the equator? because my inclination is zero. No, I don't have an ascending node or a descending node. So what we're left with is trying to determine if it's on I-axis or J-axis, and well, we kind of found that out with our picture here. Uh, you started off at I-hat, and we measure argument of longitude all the way around where the satellite is, so technically, yes, we are on the I-axis. Why? Because, well, technically, this is negative I-hat. So in our box problems for our GRs and homeworks, yes, that counts. It is still technically on the I hat axis somewhere. It just happens to be on the negative side. So we can say, yes, it's on I. And since J would be coming out here like this, we can confirm it is not on J. Oop. Cool, that about takes care of problem number two. All right, let's tackle problem number three. Again, seven major axis being 7,000. How nice, Blah, cross that out. Okay, eccentricity of 0.4. Uh, does that mean we have a circular orbit or an elliptical orbit? Well, we remember from problem one, if we have any uh, eccentricity that's above zero, like anything other than zero, it's not circular. Okay, <clears throat> I equals 90 degrees. Ooh, warning bells, warning bells. That means we have a polar orbit, right? If it's exactly 90, we know we have a polar orbit. Now, if it's polar, it cannot be equatorial. It cannot be prograde. 
It cannot be retrograde, and it is polar. Okay, so this is going to add an interesting uh, problem for us. Uh, just like problem number one, where we had to draw a top view, we're going to have to draw a side view of this orbit, um, or put another way, I'll show you, but we're basically going to do an, a side-on view of the Earth, which is not what we're usually doing. But, okay, so inclination of 90. Great. Let's draw our picture as we do. As before, draw our middle dot there. Draw our nodal vector out to the ascending node, and we're ready to begin, right? This is how we start every single box problem picture, right? Great. Okay, so we're going to trace out 350... 315 degrees worth of argument of perigee. Okay. So there's about 90. There's about 180. There's about 270. Oh boy. And then 45 more puts us right here. This is where perigee is going to be in the orbit. Oof. Let me adjust that a little bit, eh? This is our orbit, right? So I'll draw it actually on the orbit like I should. Okay, so there's our perigee is. Starting at perigee then, we take true anomaly of 135 degrees and uh, trace out 135 degrees worth of true anomaly. So there's 45. Sorry, it's cutting through my ascending node. There's another 90. This is where the spacecraft is. And that tells us a few things right off the bat. First of all, because this is a polar orbit, when we draw our orbit view, it just so happens to be also an edge-on look at the Earth from the equator. Right, so we're actually looking at the spacecraft, you know, this is our direction of spacecraft motion, right? We're watching the spacecraft fly over the North and South Pole if we were to sit, sit here and just watch this orbit. So what does that tell us? Well, because it's this edge-on view of the Earth, essentially, K-hat goes up through the North Pole. Negative K-hat goes down through the South Pole, right? Turns out our spacecraft literally just flew through, or is currently at, I should say, the K-axis. Because why? Well... There's the South Pole with all the penguins. The satellite just flew over the North Pole, right? Because if you were to follow K-hat from the center of the Earth all the way up to where the Earth ends, basically, you'll hit North Pole. And you'll see Santa Claus. Okay. So we're going to mark that it's at the North Pole. And if it's at the North Pole, it clearly can't be at the South Pole. If you're with Santa Claus, then you can't see any penguins because they're at the South Pole. Little known fact. What am I, a bio major? I don't know. Okay, spacecraft on I-axis or J-axis. This is really straightforward. I-axis, I-hat's coming out here. Ish. Uh, it's tough to, to make it a 3D. You know, it's, it's coming out on the page somewhere. We know that because the spacecraft is up here on K, it's one of those mutual exclusion things. It can't be on I, and it can't be on J either. It's on K. Great. I'm going to draw out my ascending or descending node over here, right? What have we decided about ascending node and descending node? Well, because the spacecraft is up here at the North Pole, it actually couldn't be any farther from the ascending node or the descending node, right? I mean, it's, it's very much not at either of the nodes. It's, you know, it's not heading up and it's not heading down. Rather, it's flying straight across the North Pole. So I guess what I'm trying to say is we can get rid of both of those. If I could only draw a straight line, these would be great. Okay, apogee and perigee. Oh, so we've got to work that out. So essentially what we're looking at here is we haven't even... Uh, I take it back. Uh, we, we can do this without drawing anymore. I take it back. Um, I need to be confident. I take it back. Uh, perigee is down here. Spacecraft is not at it. Over here would be apogee because it's 180 degrees away from... 
parody, right? Everything has the, you know, evil twin. Ace ain't no decent ain't no North Pole, South Pole. Apogee, perigee. Perigee, apogee. Um, spacecraft is not at either one. So we can definitely cross those off. And voila, we're done again. Just that simply. So the polar case of an orbit, not, not all that tough. Definitely doable, right? All right, let's go ahead and tackle problem number four. Okay, semi-major axis of 26,000. You guys know what I'm going to say. Doesn't tell us much for this problem. Let's look at eccentricity being 0.7. Does that tell us we have a circular or an elliptical orbit? Well, anything, again, bigger than zero means it's not perfectly circular. So <clears throat> we can get rid of that. Inclination of 63.4. Hmm, that does not indicate equatorial to me because it would need to be zero or 180 for equatorial. It does indicate prograde, right? Because we know it's between zero and 90. It, and if it's prograde, it can't be retrograde inclination, right? And unless the satellite is in an inclination of 90 degrees orbit, it can't be polar. All right, so no, it's prograde. All right, so far, so good. Ran of 90, we'll come back to that. So let's go to the picture as we do. All right, you know what we're going to do. We're going to draw this circle. Put our little dot in the middle. You know what it is. You know what it is. Line of nodes, nodal vector pointing out to, you guessed it, the ascending node. And as always, we're going to assume our satellite's going to move in this direction. Cool. Doesn't mean it's down here, by the way. It just means I'm, I'm moving counterclockwise. Okay. So as always, we're going to start you know, with the nodal vector as our shelf kind of and bounce off the diving board, trace out however much argument of perigee we have. Turns out we have argument of perigee of 270. So, you know, there's 90, there's 90, and there's another 90. Okay. As before, we're going to use that to basically give ourselves our eccentricity vector, which points to, as you guys recall, perigee, closest point in the orbit to Earth. Now, we're going to use this true anomaly of 90, right? We're going to start at perigee and draw our way around to where the spacecraft currently is. That's about 90 degrees worth. That's exactly 90 degrees worth. It's just only about because my picture is not quite perfect. But in the end, here's what we have found. Our spacecraft is right here. All right. First things first. Let's just, let's just attack this. If it's at the ascending node, can it be at the North Pole or the South Pole? No. In fact, we already kind of knew that because we're not in a polar orbit. And if we're not at the North or South Pole, we cannot be on the K-axis. So again, we kind of get to cross off a whole bunch of things right off the bat. Is the spacecraft at the ascending node? Heck yeah, it is. Look, it's right there. And if it's at the ascending node, then it can't be also at the same time be at the descending node, which would be over here. So we'll go ahead and cross that off. Let's see. Why don't we look at perigee and apogee while we're here? Uh, is it at perigee? Nope, it's 90 degrees away from perigee. And apogee is up here, right? 180 degrees away from perigee. It's not at apogee either. It's not perigee or apogee. So see you later. All right. Being on the I-axis or the J-axis. Okay, so first of all, we would have to be at the ascending node or the descending node to even have these be a possibility. Why? Well, the ascending node and the descending node are on the equator. Okay, they're in the plane of the equator. So, the only place where our satellite crosses the equator or even touches the equator is the ascending node or the descending node. Okay, well, ding, 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 alarm bells, right? Because we are at the ascending node. So that means... We're going to go ahead and have to draw our top view. Ice caps, K hat coming out at you. Make sure I label here. Top view, 
of the earth. Okay, so our orbit is basically coming out. Uh, let's see, let me take that back. Our orbit, here's our I hat. Nine degrees away is J hat. That's just I hat and J hat looking down, right? Okay, ran of 90 means we're going to start at I hat, trace out 90 degrees worth of ran. So what that's telling us is that the spacecraft being at the ascending node, that means it's somewhere around here on the equator, but it's in a very special place because it is 90 degrees away from I hat. So not only is it at the ascending node, the ascending node happens to be on the J axis. And if it's on J, you can clearly see it's not on I. All right, and we've done problem four. All right, let's tackle problem number five. All right, our seven major axis of 7,000. That doesn't do much for us with box problems. Just go ahead and cross that out. Who cares? Okay, here we go. Eccentricity of zero. That's something fun. Okay, so that's going to tell us we have a circular orbit, right? Great. Inclination of 98 degrees. Ah, oh, if it was 90, we'd know it was polar, but it's not quite 90, so it's not polar. And since it's not zero, we know it's not equatorial. If it was between zero and 90, remember, it would be prograde, but it's not. It is instead retrograde, right? Because it's between 90 and 180. Cool. All right, because it's not polar, again, because it's not polar, we know we can cross out it being at the north or south pole. And because the north and south poles are on the k-axis, we know it's not on the k-axis either. All right, the dominoes keep falling. This is good. Let's go to the picture now. Problem number four. Orbit view. Start in the middle. Draw our middle vector out to the ascending node. All right. Now, we've already encountered a problem. Right, because what we usually do is trace out our argument of perigee. Undefined, because we have no perigee, which means that true anomaly is undefined. Oh, brother. Okay. Well, no problem. We have this thing called argument of latitude, and we abbreviate it with a U. Who, me? Yes, you. Ha, ha, ha. We are, uh, argument of latitude, for some reason, is abbreviated with a, a U. And we kind of use that in the same way that we use true longitude. But basically, U, we start off at the ascending node, so we'll kind of draw our stuff out here, and we draw ourselves around, to where the spacecraft is located. The spacecraft is here. So we know it's over here at the descending node. First things first. That's a nice thing to know, right? Because it's 180 degrees away from the ascending node. So not at ascending, is at descending. Cool. Okay, I axis and J axis. Well, alarm bell should be going off because we know that we could only be on I or J if we were at a node because that's where the satellite crosses over the equator. So we are on the equator. We're at the des descending node. Hmm. That means we're gonna have to do a top view. And use ran. All right, so we'll draw our i hat out this way, and j hat is 90 degrees away as always, and k hat's coming out of the paper at you. So, starting at i hat, tracing out around 100, 
35 degrees worth of ran. Well, that tells us that although the spacecraft is at the descending node, that descending node is not on I-hat or J-hat, right? So we can thankfully cross those out. Now here's kind of a tricky thing. Because we don't have an argument of perigee, we can't have perigee and we can't have apogee. Well, that takes care of number five.